Hi, welcome to my blog, Edis English Literature. Today we are going to discuss about Old English uh, Anglo-Saxon poetry uh, that uh, roughly begins uh, from 5th century and it continued till 11th century. So in this uh, range or in this period, there are so many poems written, uh, partly lost, but we have plenty of text uh, still remaining by which we can sum up the Anglo-Saxon people's lifestyle, their ethics, their uh, style of um, utterances and social behaviors and all such things. But uh, the pagan poetry, the segment that we are going to discuss today is non-religious text. So as we are talking, after the withdrawal of uh, Romans, Jude Saxons and uh, Anglic uh, three Germanic tribes settled in the sea coast and uh, first, uh, first, of, first of all they conquered the land and drive away the Celtic British that is uh, Celtic Britain that we popularly speak them the earliest uh, settler there they were driven away from or rather enslaved there and gradually um, these Anglo-Saxon people uh, develops, develops their inter-trade and settled in every sphere of uh, their life. So their social being, their social cultures, their social ethics, their social beliefs and everything they interact can be traced away into this pagan text. So it's very important as a student of literature uh, the study of these Anglo-Saxon poems is very important for all of us. So, as we were speaking, uh, the Anglo-Saxons and the Jutes, the Germanic tribes, uh, they uh, bring among them uh, the culture, the language and their traditions uh, that we simply can sum up. Their language that's, that they speak, their beliefs that is non-christian that is pagan and that distinct warrior instinct okay so these three principles by which uh, they invades roman roman colony and driven away the britons in the fifth and sixth century that very spirit were alive in anglo-saxon pagan text so we, we if we read all these texts of pagan text then we will uh, readily get the glimpse of the uh, these peoples, tribal peoples, the, where the earlier settlers in Britain. If we go through the texts, we can easily get who the Anglo-Saxons are or what type of culture or beliefs they were in. They were warriors, fierce warriors. They love the blue sea. Uh, the, they are the seafarers. They have the quality to navigate the sea with force, with might. And their manly heroism and their hard toils, everything makes Anglo-Saxon truly to their name and uh, truly their poetry are heroic because their bravery, their um, ba battleship, their wa warrior qualities and their heroic traits are being exhibited everywhere in Pagan. Here uh, we come across generally some elevated male-centered views of a tribal community of the ties of royalty between lord and league men and the significance of the individual heroisms and most notably the powerful faith that are invading in their life is also becomes a pivotal character in their writing but one thing that I must um, uh, share with you is that in the old English text even if the heroism centers around male the, the woman fright and woman dignity has been shown in heroic terms women had greater liberty I say uh, that uh, British have to wait for uh, thousand Beulf, the most notable epic poem that we find in Anglo-Saxon period is so attractive in its uh, literary output as well as its heroic theme 
and its dramatic presentation of all those uh, characters that um, we uh, can make films one after another uh, on this particular uh, legendary story. The Beowulf story is uh, rather a pagan one because the elements if we if we search after uh, any Christianity or Christian elements here we will fail to see any but uh, hard connotations are also possible some of the critics are also find out some Christian elements here, but we will read or most of the critics read Beowulf as a non-Christian poem or pagan. Beowulf is an epic narrative that celebrates the achievements of a hero. The poet who is anonymous here last, is the oral traditional story that has been circulating for a prolonged period and might have been written at that time. So what the story they are carrying is non-Christian. The storyline of Beowulf is built around great fights with monsters who came in between the narrative by intruding themselves into accounts of human celebrations and community. Hrothgar, the king of Danes, built a wonderful court at Herat, where at every night there is feast, many making, but there is a sinister and grotesque order of creatures bent on finishing of both the king and the court. Monster Grendel under the cover of dark night intrudes into the court and kills many of the knights, many of the king's friends. This thing continues for long 15 years. Then it is Beulf the hero who accosts the abominable spirit and he challenged Grendel and challenging Grendel inflicts the final fatal blow to the intruder and drives him back to his uh, wilderness and finally kills him. So Bill becomes a hero as by the invite of the king he comes and invades that giant who was disturbing and finally jabs him. There is euphoria and jubilation. Most probably there is a triumph that the king and the other knights were not expecting. So Bub's heroic deed has made everything jubilant. The triumph of the Beowulf over the Grendel, the, uh, the, the manivolent monster or the, um, the very uh, black uh, in compared to very bright of uh, view. But as Grendel has been defeated, soon pops up another enemy that is Grendel's mother who wants to avenge her son's death and mounts a new attack on Herod. He liked to make a final blow. Bill in fact gets ready for it and chases her into her what retreat and with his followers, Bill followed her till to the end, running through the inhabitable deserts, empty ponds, and black sea cliffs. He ultimately and finally kills the monster. After taming the unsafe and cold wild world of beasts, the inheritance of the outcast, the exile, and the outsider. The Buell gets honors and rewards in his homeland. It is quite appreciating one that he has done something heroic by killing a monster and the mother. He later becomes the king of gates for his heroic deeds and rules for plenty of years without any disturbances. In the old age, Buell once again journey towards uncanny, unknown, unseen world to fight a new battle. But everyone, everyone was requesting Beulf not to go into that desert land once again at this age. But he was ready. He was ready 
because death is better for our dear than a of life of till the last minute and he was finally and fatally wounded and dies a death of an epical hero three thousand lines and then it's supposed to be the oldest text surviving epic in Teutonic people anterior to the Scandinavian sagas and considerably older than the great medieval romances of southern Europe. So Beulf is linguistically arresting one and um, as for the interest for sociological perspective it also interests many scholars to find out the heroic traits that had, are being exhibited in Beulf is rather a heroic traits that every Anglo-Saxon people adhodes in their heart. So, studying Beulf might have been a proper study of Anglo-Saxon. We can also uh, tell that Beulf is a sage of primitive race. Their values, morals, royalty, sacrifice, fearlessness, courtesy, tolerance, heroism, everything that Beulf exhibits is itself the characteristic features that every Anglo-Saxon people like to exhibit in we are talking life. about Anglo-Saxon non-religious poems or pagan poems. Uh, there are uh, a few of the examples of other poems uh, apart from Buell which are also reflecting the social and military as well as fidelity as well as some kind of uh, relationship are being exhibited in other poems notably the battle of Maldon, the death of Enoch and the fight of Finsward. These texts are very interesting to read in itself but Beulf stands, uh, stands alone as an epic. Other poems are notably important but not so uh, the intensity is like that of a Beulf. With battle the Essex nobleman bent not a, a pirate party of Vikings that the fighting is being told uh, in Battle of Maldon or the death of uh, North. Uh, it is an older epic style and the examine uh, the traces and trends innate in the heroic mode or accent.